There we go. No, no, I've, I've got my little microphone on me. Um, so welcome everyone. And um, okay, so is everyone comfortable for the moment? Okay. At any point during any of this, if you are uncomfortable, feel welcome to become comfortable. You know, if you have an itch, scratch your itch. If something is getting Charlie horse, massage it out. If during the regression, because a regression will take probably, you know, I'm going to say it'll take a half hour. It'll probably take more like 45 minutes or, you know, sometimes an hour. You know, once we're in, if the, as long as the energy is strong, we'll just keep staying in and doing more and more. So I don't know in advance. That can be a long time to be sitting still. So if anytime during the regression you feel the need to shift position or even to stand up or to stretch, just, you know, uh, if you're opening your eyes, keep your eyes just kind of spaced out so that you're still in the experience. Like, you know how if you're doing a walking meditation, like if you're walking in the woods, you don't close your eyes. Your eyes are open or you'll be like, you know, doing a falling down, walking into trees meditation. Oh, I walked into the hornet's nest. Um, so even if your eyes are open, you can have your third eye still connected and receiving information. But if you sit with like a Charlie horse and a stabbing pain in your back and, you know, whatever, then it'll be really hard to connect. So just keep yourself comfortable and respect the space around people. If there's anyone who snores, then I'm going to ask, please stay sitting upright. Um, because if you zonk out then and you're snoring, then later you'll be wondering why everyone's giving you the stink eye. When you come back, oh, that was a great experience. Why is everyone hating on me? Um, and um, let's see. And also, if you find you're someone who, as soon as you start meditating, you're like gone. And then later when the energy is coming back down, you find yourself grabbed and returned with the group. You may want to stay sitting up to help keep your, uh, your experience with the group experience. So later you'll go, I remember what happened, not, well, I feel great. I have no idea what happened. Um, so I guess everyone in this room agrees that there is a possibility of reincarnation. Um, I have actually done past life regressions for people who do not believe in reincarnation. There are people who don't know what they believe, or there are people who do not believe it, but they know that when they go through this experience, it's very therapeutic with helping them deal with issues that they have. Um, so, it doesn't really matter what your belief system is or um, what you do with this information, so long as you understand whatever comes through is coming through for a reason, for a purpose. Um, the past lives that feel most connected to us in this life are the ones that come through the quickest. And I can tell you, each and every one of us has had past lives where we're like, okay, so I was a farmer, I farmed, and then I died. Those lives are pretty much not going to come through for you in this regression. What will come through are the lives that are like, this person's here for a reason and a purpose, and I want to be a part of that experience. The lives that generally come through are the lives that are here to help guide you with your experience in this life or the lives that maybe did not complete their karmic lesson and they know that by being aligned with you in this life that will help them to complete their their lesson so that they're ready to go on to their next state of being or sometimes it's lives that are just sitting around they think that this is going to be really entertaining and so they're just hanging out watching and laughing at you um, so you may sense those lives, but they generally don't come forward as like one of the past life experiences. Um, 
And I, I call those like the peanut gallery past lives. They're like, oh, look what's going to happen. And come on, come on, let's hang out. We got to watch this. So you may send some off. Like some of my past lives are just laughing at me. I'm like, yeah, we, we get that every single life. Um, so some people wonder, how is it if we're alive in this life, our past lives are coming forward and communicating with us and guiding us. Um, and there's different ways of seeing this or, or explaining it. One way is to remember when we're not in physical form, we're beings of energy. You know, we're pretty much like eternal beings of energy that have a lot of energy to share. And uh, when we're in one life, when we're done with that life, the energy of that life doesn't cease to exist. It just absorbs back into the total state of being. So our past lives are able to be part of the collective that is our higher self, our current life, our past lives, and our future lives. Or they're able to be like stand out all on their own. Um, and uh, one of the ways that I like to visit past lives is actually to create a sacred space where I and whatever past lives wish to come forward, we hang out and have like a dinner party together or a cocktail party or a picnic. And we're all just sitting around like in a circle chatting, you know, like regular party conversation. And then if anyone's like, oh, wait, I have an anecdote anecdote that can explain what I mean, they'll grab me and pull me into their life and show me a portion of, you know, the experience I had when I was that life. And then we go back to the party and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. And so it's, um, uh, for me, that's like a fun way because I love hosting parties. And, uh, when I host a party for my past lives, they kind of have to show up. So I never get that like I threw a party and no one showed up situation. Um, there are different ways of connecting with our past lives. Uh, there's that way. Um, there's also one where you can feel which chakra maybe needs a little attention at the moment and connect with that chakra and say, which past life wants to help me with this? And then, um, you can connect that chakra with your like your horror line or like the pineal gland where the third eye and the crown chakra come together, connect it together. And for me, it's sort of an experience where say uh, my solar plexus has some issues. I'm like, is there a past life that's the cause of this or the past life that can help me with this? Is there any past life situation? I'll connect my, my solar plexus chakra with my pineal. I'll let the energy of the two come together. And then I dive into that energy. And it almost like it does a swan dive where it goes out and goes right back into my solar plexus chakra. Uh, or it could be the heart or any other chakra. And the next thing you know, I'm thrown into a life that is connected with whatever is the issue I'm grappling with. And I'll see that that life may be the point of origin for my issue, or it may be a life that dealt with the issue a similar or the same issue successfully to um, give me the energy to help with this issue. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone. I love you guys. <laughs> That's so good. So, um, you know, the thing to remember is like, uh, you know, we talk with our guardian angel, we talk with our guides, we talk with ascended masters, we can talk with our higher self. All of our past lives are part of our collective that is within our higher self. We can talk with them anytime we want. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of little anecdotes. So one time, um, uh, this was many years ago, the very first time I ever saw a psychic medium for a session. The first time I actually paid money to see a psychic medium. And again, a long time ago, I thought I was crazy, like throwing my money away on something so bizarre. And um, 
so I'm sitting in the waiting room for Carl Davis and um, it was my first time ever meeting him and I'm just kind of getting myself into a quiet state and um, suddenly I was thrown into a vision of a past life and one of my past lives was walking uh, through this beautiful garden um, it was sort of like around Jane Austen type time and she was obviously uh, a woman of noble stature. She was like a lady in waiting to a princess or queen or something. And, um, and she was walking and she was chatting with a friend. And she uh, turned around, looked me in this life in the face and winked at me. And then turned back and ran up to her tutor, waving to him and saying, I have a question for you. And then I was thrown out of that vision i'm like well that's strange now keep in mind at that point while i didn't understand about psychic mediums i thought that everyone could travel through time and dimensions because i always did that so i didn't realize that was like the weird part not talking to a psychic medium hi come on in we just started it's okay yeah uh, we're just chatting out here, and then for the regression, we're spreading out. Um, so I went to meet with Carl, and I told him what had happened, and he said, wait a minute, and he tapped in, and um, like I didn't really give him details. I just said one of my past lives was here. And he's like, wait a minute, he tapped in, and he described to me very much what I just saw, only he was describing it from the perspective of the tutor watching the two young ladies walking over and and so like we knew that he had been my tutor in that life so sometimes past lives come forward in funny ways and um the more you are open to it the more they can come forward and sort of i don't know work with you mess with your head you know it's a fine line there um Um, so connecting with past lives is a really powerful tool. It's not just about, um, being curious about who was I before I was me. I mean, that's a big part of it and a big part of the fun of it, but it's also about, um, why am I here in this life and what of my past lives is here to help me? And what of my past lives needs help from me so that my soul can be clean and clear? I had a past life that was about, I think, um, like 2,300 years ago. and No, 3,500 years ago. And he was like just horribly abused slave. He, was ne he never had a kind word to him, not once in his life. He never had a speck of love. It was just a really, really horrible, confusing life for him. And when he died, he was like still bewildered as to why it was that way. And um, so he never reconnected to the higher self. He just stayed in this state of pain for like 3,500 years. And that meant every single life from him to me had him connected to them in their heart, this little element of confusion and pain so um i was in a past life regression led by uh hannah pap who is amazing and um you know we came out of the uh, regression and everyone's like oh this is great i was like sobbing like snotty sobbing i was a mess and just like racking and uh, very embarrassed, you know, that everyone else is like, oh, this was great. I'm like, <laughs> it's so painful. <laughs> um, so uh, I, uh, Hannah helped me do a sacred ceremony where I went into sacred space, which can be like on an island, in a cave. Uh, this one was on... Um, you know, it can be in a, you know, a pasture surrounded by, you know, healing forest. This was on a butte mountaintop and um, we had a sacred fire and 
he came out and sat with me around the fire and we talked and um and he was like so scared and um i told him about some of the lives that we've been since him you know i said you're not alone you're like the big brother of all the lives that have come after you and i told him about like amazing healing lives and you know good lives and this and that and i said and everyone is you know looks to you as part of us and he was like blown away um and i said what would you like what will help you to heal and he said well for one thing i would like a name because yeah he never had a name and i said well what name would you like um uh, and keep in mind this this slave was physically deformed like he made quasimodo of the hunchback of notre dame look handsome he was born physically deformed and he had been abused and beaten and whipped like every day of his life so he was not a handsome man but he was very intelligent and good um and sad so he said i would like the name dudley i said dudley why and he said i love those cartoons with dudley do right where he always comes along looking so handsome on his mountain steed and rescues penelope pit stop and i'm like from the bullwinkle cartoons I'm like yeah I'm like okay so his name became dudley and um and he asked us to see him with the same awe that we would see dudley do right and i was like you mean the cartoon character and he's like yeah i'm like okay well obviously my dudley sees this cartoon character as like the be all and end all and that's how we all look to him because he's our big brother and over a number of years he was able to resolve himself from this misshapen creature to a being of pure light and then rejoin the higher self so he was able to do that without any pain on my side beyond that original like extreme pain of connection oh my god but it turned out to be very beautiful and he is now a wonderful guiding force for um many of my past lives that still had unresolved karma helping them to resolve their karma so they don't have to like come back and live another life to finish the lesson so yeah so when you connect with your past lives understand there's always a reason and no matter what the experience of the moment the reason is to help your soul with its total state of evolution i am like so glad that i met dudley and he is just like a joy he has been non-stop like he has 35 years of misery to like counterbalance with an eternity of joy and he's he's doing it um so no matter what you experience when you go into your regression just let it unfold to you without any judgment without any pushing it without any like oh i don't like this one whatever comes forward comes forward for a reason and the more you just open up and allow it to unfold without any effort on your side as so you're watching a movie you know the more you allow it to take on its own life force the more you can learn from it and weave the energies together for your total state of connection All right now um when we do the regression every single one of you will have a different experience and this won't just be the lives you connect with it can also be how you connect with the lives and each life you connect with may be a different sensory connection some people are really visual so it could be you'll go into the life and you're actually watching it like you're watching a movie some people are really empathic and you're maybe when you close your eyes you just see swirling colors so you're like well how am i going to see my life open up and let the senses just receive what they receive and you may find that wow i got an overwhelming emotion let yourself open and let the emotion overwhelm you and then you might get an full download of the life like in one second you get the whole life 
or it could be uh, you feel like you're reading a book or listening to the radio or like someone speaking in the back of your mind or, you know, however it comes into you, open up. And the more you just receive without, you know, direct action on your side, the more you just receive with full trust, the more you'll be able to receive. Okay. Um, Raise your hand to everyone here who's a visual person. Okay. Raise your hand to everyone. And it's okay if your hand goes up multiple times. Who's an auditory person? Okay. Yeah, that's all right, too. <laughs> Raise your hand if you are an emotionally connecting or empathic person. Okay. Raise your hand if you ever get, like, codes or downloads. So you see, there's so many ways to receive. And I'll tell you, you can go, and it's okay if your hand goes up every time. <laughs> and there's so many more ways we didn't even mention because I was just doing that for a point that when you go into the past life, one life, you may find someone's telling you the story of a life and you're in total darkness. Like you may be in a void and you just hear a life being told in your brain, not even in your ears. And you're like, where's that coming from? What, what? Just let it happen. And then later when you remember, you're like, it's as though I was there. I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything. I didn't feel anything, but it was in my brain. And now I remember it as though I was there experiencing it. You know, so this is really what spirit vision spirit sight is about. It's not about looking for anything because we all know when you're looking for something, you will only see what you're looking for. It's about receiving however it comes in and then letting it present in however it will present. Um, and it could be the next life you're actually in the body experiencing it. And you're like, wow, I'm actually the me in there then at the whatever, you know? And then the next life, it could be you're reading a newspaper magazine and you're like, oh, I gotta read, I gotta read. Like, you know, just put your hand on it and let it absorb in or, you know, um, or, you know, just ask your guides, okay, I'm reading the newspaper magazine. How can I get this information in me? And they'll say, well, just receive it and it will flow into you or, you know, so allow it to come through. And the way it comes through is often a combination of the easiest way for you to receive the frequency of that life. And two, the easiest way for that life to get through the chinks of your openings for you. Okay. Um, okay. Good. I'm so excited. We have such a great group here today. You guys have n no idea how I, I'm just like, my guides have been flipping out all day. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, and you guys feel welcome to move around whenever. Oh, yeah, yeah, here. That's quite all right. Um, okay. Well, I'll be moving a little more in, like, I'll be sitting in the doorway during the presentation. Okay. Um, so, okay, guys, just give me like a couple more minutes and we'll take a short break to get set up. I just want to tell you how we're going to have the experience. Um, that's their choice. Um, how we're going to have the experience. I'm going to take you on a guided spirit journey. The goal of the spirit journey, just like any spirit journey, is to raise your vibration as high as possible. When I do past life regressions, uh, the various spirit journeys we usually go on, like when I do one-on-one, -on -one, the person's soul will always guide me on the spirit journey. So sometimes we go place, I'm like, wow, I've never been here before. So it could be uh, that, you know, the traditional one is we start in a garden and we go on a path through the garden. 
I'll give you a lot of details, a lot of like aroma, the feeling of the light, the feeling of the breeze, uh, you know, the animals and the insects and the colors. The reason we give all these details, the reason we give all these details is to help you start becoming receptive to receiving detailed information. And we go on a path meandering, you know, through the garden, through the woods, maybe down a cliff, you know. Uh, we may talk with guides as we're going along, and then we go up the stairway through the clouds, stopping along each way to talk with increasingly higher vibrational beings. Um, sometimes I'll do a past life regression. We go into the Akashic Library, where you get the book from the library. Today, they want us to take um, a journey up to um, the Twilight Realm, the Bardo. Those of us that did the cord cutting yesterday, we're going the same place. The Bardo is the land between time and space. And um, there's a group of us who were there yesterday. So my guides already built a grid and connected everyone to it. So they want us back there. It's a lot... It's a land between physical and spiritual and energetic. It's a place where whomever or whatever you call is contractually obligated to present themselves. It is also a wonderful place for past lives. We are going to go to the Twilight Realm, which some people see almost like a, a Montana Butte in the stars inside a void of nothingness. So... Yeah, because it, it's between everything. And uh, we're going to find our way to the Bardo. And when we get there, we're going to find all these doorways. Each doorway will be a doorway to one of your past lives. And as you approach a doorway, you'll feel yourself being drawn to certain doorways. Each doorway, when you look upon it, will have a look or an energy, or a feeling, or a sound that is resonant with the life on the other side of it. Just like when you go in the Akashic Library, when you get your book, every single past life will have a different looking book. So if you go in and you get your book and you're sitting there and you look at the cover, when you go into the life, when you come out, you're like, oh, that's why the cover looked like that. And then you sit for a moment, you're like, okay, I'd like to go into another life. You look, I'm like, wait a minute, my big fat leather bound tome just turned into a Fodor's pocket guide because it's, it's resonant for the next life. In this case, the doorways will be resonant for the life. If you approach a doorway, if you're drawn to it, and then when you get the doorway, you're like, I don't want to go through there, then just go to another doorway. No one will force you. It could be it's a life that's calling to you, but you're like just not ready to face what's there. Or it could be you'll say, I'm really frightened, but I want to go through. You know, feel your emotion before you go through the doorway. And, um, you know, and if it doesn't resonate with you at the moment, pick another doorway. That's totally fine. Then you'll know that there's a challenge waiting for you. And as you develop your past life connection uh, energy, it might be one that you'll deal with another time. And you might find like maybe four or five journeys later, you go through that door and you're like, oh, now I'm actually totally fine with handling it. It's not necessarily that there's something bad there. It might be something that maybe you're not just ready to handle. You know, like um, if you're learning to play piano, you might want to try... A simpler song to begin with and then handle the Beethoven a little later you know it doesn't mean that you know don't be worried about your emotions that your emotions guide you but if any guide you away from anything there's nothing like bugaboo we create you know this is as safe a space as you can get and um, I know Ariel did space clearing I did space clearing this will be a totally safe exploration I do feel a few very high adventures waiting for you all. And um, I know there's like a whole emotional terrain here. So um, we will go through, depending on the energy of the group, as long as it's high, we'll stay there. We'll go through three to five doorways. Um, 
And if after three doorways it feels like we're petering down, we might come back and, you know, do some more work. Um, or we might do three doorways and then we may connect with someone else. Like one of your guides may come to the bardo, you know, or your higher self, you know. So we'll, we'll see how the energy goes. So the more you guys relax and just receive like your little babies, you know, being cared for by your mamas, the more we can do. Okay. All right. So um, let's take a moment. If anyone needs to use a restroom, go ahead. And then we have two rooms that we can fill up for the uh, regression time. 